What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, on the back of the last video I did about RB25s quite a while ago, which uh, seems to get a fair bit of attention, I thought I would do while I'm at it, um, actually installing a rear head drain on an RB25 head. Um, so this is a car that I'm doing for a mate. That's um, already been put together, motor's already together, so we're doing this head drain with the head on the motor. Um, so I just thought I'd show you how, how to do it. It's not very, e uh, it's not very hard. <laughs> It's quite simple and it's going to sort of save you a fair bit as far as your oil inches for your RB25. So, uh, this motor has standard oil pump on it, but the crank has had the extended collar put on it and it's been grub screwed, so it should be sweet. But um, it's got no uh, rest extra restrictors in the uh, oil feeds to the head at all, so that's why we're going to go ahead and put this uh, rear drain on it. So, we'll get into it. So, today we're using a Ross Racing drain. Um, so, all we're going to do is punch out this Welsh plug in the back of the head and this drain actually mounts on that Welsh plug. So you do need to drill and tap two holes. Um, so we'll go through that as we go along. Uh, this is the first time I've used a Ross Performance, um, but uh, they seem to be pretty good. You can actually tilt them and move them around. So this one I'll try and probably keep it up fairly high just because I want as much room as I can here at the bell housing. If you have it too low, it's gonna interfere with that bell housing there, which is gonna be a pain, so. So as you can see here, the head's very soft, it's very easy to mark with a punch, um, and that way you just make sure you get your, your holes in the center. So what I've done with these holes is offset them just a little bit and not had them flat so that if we need to, we can get a bit more rotation on that fitting to get it further away from this bell housing bolt here if it becomes a problem. Um, so you can see inside the head there, uh, the nature of this head, there's two drains uh, right at the back here, this side and this side. Uh, this uh, head has head studs in it. so. The, uh, the actual drain there is underneath that journal you can sort of see sticking out there. It's, um, so it's down there, it's on the left of that stud. It's actually not easy to get at. Um, so you would have to probably try quite hard to actually get swarf down there. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna chuck a tack rag just in this hole, um, just in the back there to make sure it catches any potential swarf or any swarf that's gonna come through when we drill these holes. And uh, before I pull the tack rag out, I'm just gonna use a vacuum cleaner in some hose just to hose any more swarf out of the center there. But uh, her head's very soft, Ali. Um, it's quite easy to drill through. And all we're gonna do is drill these out with a five mil drill bit. And then we've got a six mil tap. So this Ross fitting uh, comes with M6 by one bolts. So we've got an M6 by one tap, uh, but you'll just have to tap whatever you need for the bolts you're using for your fitting.
Alrighty, so scary part's done. So, time to fit the fitting. Um, it's a rubber o-ring seal against where the welsh plug seats. So as always, a little bit of rubber grease for the o-ring seal. Bit of rubber grease on the seal helps it just seal up. <clears throat> Alright, so the other thing you've got to consider when you're doing this modification as well is now you've got two new bolt holes that go through to a wet area and are no longer blind. So a little bit of uh, thread sealant always is very good to do for this sort of thing. Otherwise you could have potential oil spilling out or leaking out the, um, the threads. So you don't want to do this too tight, obviously something like an M6 thread, even as steel, is usually only 10 to 15 foot pounds, which is only really a firm one hand. So something into such soft alley, you really don't want to be doing it too tight, it doesn't need to be that tight. So that's how you install the uh, Ross rear head drain on a motor that's together, which is less than ideal, but obviously sometimes it's a lot less costly than pulling the motor back down, isn't it Dan? <laughs> So this rag that I used is actually a tack rag. For anyone out there that does some panel beating, you'll know what this is. It is just for wiping down panels, uh, prepping for paint. So it's uh, specially developed to be sticky and get rid of all that sort of stuff. Uh, if you don't have a tack rag, if you just get uh, air filter oil would be best. A bit of air filter oil on a regular rag uh, or any kind of oil will still help catch all that swarf. Um, so here you can see the actual fitting on the head here. Um, this end of the fitting is just a dash eight which is half inch and uh, what would normally happen is you would um, run this back to a fitting on the sump as a, an extra return uh, obviously with Dan not wanting to muck around with this engine too much what we're opting to do is to tee it into the turbo drain so this would be half inch hose back to a dash 8 fitting so there you have it guys it's one fitting down and teed into the turbo drain and I've put this on here just as some heat protection from the dump pipe, which is going to come down sort of here. Dump pipe will be heat wrapped as well, but just a bit of extra precaution. I've put this heat wrap over it. And uh, it's that easy. Right, so there you go, guys. You don't have to pull your engine down to actually install that head drain. You will obviously have to have it out of the car, but it uh, can be done without it. And uh, so that's how you get it done. So cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Smash like and subscribe. And I'll uh, see you on the next one.